All right, what's your intro for our yet to be named podcast? We uh, we need an intro here. The, the Steve Scholl intro. Welcome. It is welcome to the <laughs> weekly blog live with Madison today. Welcome everyone. First episode. We don't even have a name for this podcast yet. It's under discussion, but under discussion. Correct. <laughs> so our topic for today is the Fofi Agent Conference, which was on Monday and Tuesday of this week, March 25th and 26th. It's over now, and we're going to talk about the big takes, big takeaways. Well, first of all, I've got to introduce you. Yes, that's true. <laughs> this is the person who has written all our books, The Full Fee Agent, The Real Estate Team Playbook, Real Estate is Not Rocket Science, and You Can't Scale Chaos, and she writes the weekly blog, and everyone... Madison. Right. You've been you've been reading my work all this time and you had no idea. So here I am. <laughs> I want to publicly welcome you for or thank not welcome. Thank you for all your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I really had um, a great time at the conference seeing everybody buy the books, seeing everyone get excited about the books, say great things about them. It seems like they're really, you know, creating a lot of value for you guys. So I'm so happy about that. You did an awesome job. All right. All right. So my my biggest takeaways from the, the conference we did this week, by far getting to experience the performance coaching community. Uh, it, it, it was incredible to, to see everyone networking and the, the depths of the relationship and, you know, the absolute love that people have. And how everyone encourages and supports each other. It was just an amazing thing of beauty. Yeah, I would agree. And I say I say that because I, I asked a lot of people, you know, what was the value they were getting out of the conference um, over the course of the two days? And everybody said that, you know, practicing tactical empathy, sometimes you feel really alone. Um, the people around you, the people, other people in your brokerage or other agents that you, you know, you work with on, on deals, they have no idea about this stuff. They have no idea what you're trying to do. Um, and for a lot of people, this is the first time they've really been surrounded by a group that understands what we're trying to do here. And, and they love it. They love it. And it was great for everyone to be immersed for two full days and we we only went an inch wide and a mile deep in tactical empathy and a lot of people have gotten it piecemeal you know whether they read the book or they've been in a coaching program or on a call however to get it all in 48 hours from a to z i think that was a great experience for everyone yeah, I think it's really different to hear it all day long for two days than to practice even half an hour every day. If you're on the if you're on the role play calls every day, you feel like you're in it a lot. But you, I think you have to push farther and deeper when you're in it for a longer period of time. And and we saw this at the end of the second day. Um, there was a really great exercise that Derek Gaunt from the Black Swan Group led, and it really showed how challenging it can be in the moment to you know, stay on to be listening to the other person, to be reacting, um, in a genuine, authentic way. Like it's really challenging. And if you don't, if you don't get an opportunity to stay deep in this idea of tactical empathy for more than 30 minutes at a time, you might not really get to push that far. And I, th I think that was one of the big themes in the two day program, repetition, repetition, repetition. That's how you get smarter. That's how you get better. And to be able to practice in front of your peers, to be on the hot seat, feel the pressure. One of the things Chris loves to say is pressure creates diamonds. <laughs> and everyone's got to decide whether they want to be a diamond. And if you want to be yeah. a diamond, you've got to put yourself in the hot seat you know, over and over again. Yeah. And pressure is not always fun. It's not fun, and which was another theme, the idea of embracing being uncomfortable rather than any time you feel discomfort, yeah. wanting to do something that would make you more comfortable. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that's what that Derek says all the time is, you know, when, when anybody is uncomfortable, the first thing they want to do, the only thing they want to do is get comfortable again. And if you follow that instinct, you just can't get anywhere with tactical empathy. You have to sit in the discomfort. You have to take risk. You have to put, again, remember with all your clients, hopes and dreams are on the line and also their fears, their worries, their concerns. And it's not about you. It's about them. And uh, again, you know, looking back on the program and I was thinking about this going into the program, the program just really confirmed it at a very deep level, which is tactical empathy is all about you demonstrating your understanding of what someone is going through, their situation, their circumstance, and what they're thinking and feeling. Yeah. When, when I'm a buyer or I'm a seller and I get that you get what I'm going through and I get that you get what I'm thinking and feeling as a human being, that is what makes you the favorite or at least puts you in the best chance of being the favorite. Yeah. And what really struck me watching everyone over the two days was how nuanced it can be. Like you can read about it, you can talk about it, you can think that you understand the principles, but like one word wrong or a slightly off tone and you get the complete opposite reaction that you're going for, right? Instead of making someone feel understood, you just tick them off even more. And, you know, which was a, another thing that came up. Everyone has always been taught common, this idea of common ground. Oh, you play <laughs> tennis? I play tennis. You went to Italy? I went to Italy. You've got kids? I've got kids. Yeah. And, and what, what came out in this program is how common ground is really, what, what you're really saying, you're trying to one-up somebody. Oh, you did something? I did that too. Oh, yeah. you did that? Oh, I did that too. Because and as soon as you identify the common ground, you're actually turning the whole conversation around to yourself. To yourself, right, exactly. You're not, it's, you're, it's not about them anymore. It's, but it's so instinctive. And, and I don't know, um, it's, I'll, this is a little bit of a, a personal connection, but I actually first started hearing about this when I studied abroad. And I found that um, uh, people in other cultures don't have this instinct that Americans have to find the common ground. And like, you tell me a story about your vacation and automatically I'm like, oh yeah, I went on vacation too, or I've been to Hawaii too, or blah, blah, blah. We do that as Americans and who knows why we learn to do this, but it's it's not a thing in all other cultures. And, and I think that's really interesting that like we have this tendency as a culture like it's, we all do it, but it's not the only way. It's not. So since I have you, <laughs> let me, let me turn the tables. What are one or two things that you picked up on at the conference that stood out for you personally? Okay. I think one of the big things for me was, um, what Derek said about, um, I think he calls it the, the presenting dynamic and the latent dynamic. And you have to be careful when you're using labels because sometimes, especially in highly charged situations, if you label the presenting dynamic, which is like the thing they just said, or the thing that's really obvious, sometimes the reaction isn't, oh, I feel understood. It's like, duh, you know, <laughs> like if somebody is really, is really upset and you say, you seem angry, it's like, hello, like, of course I'm angry. And it just kind of makes them even angrier that you said that. Whereas if you, the, the latent dynamic is what's driving the anger. What's the, like, what are they thinking about? What is the situation that they haven't said verbally, but you can guess is driving the anger. So it sounds like you're really frustrated that this is taking longer than you expected. Maybe they didn't, they didn't actually say that, but you can make an educated guess based on your understanding of the context. And that is what really makes them feel understood. That's like that, that's the level two <laughs> of right, our tactical I, empathy. Right. What I see a lot when people label, what they're really doing is mimicking and, and not labeling, or they're regurgitating what someone just said rather 
what is that person really thinking and feeling? Right. Right. And that's, um, it's a nuance that you, I think really takes practice because, <laughs> and I, I noticed this a lot in the exercise at the end of the second day, um, when people get stuck thinking about like how to execute the technique, like how to do the label or do the mirror, or do the summary, um, then they're not, first of all, they're not really listening. So they miss what's really going on with the other person. And second of all, the tone gets really off. The tone starts to sound really robotic or weird. And, and that's like one of those things that can really undermine your ability to make someone else feel understood. And you, it sounds like you're thinking too hard. It comes well, through. Yeah, I was just going to bring that up the <laughs> conference. You saw people wanting to get it perfect, searching for the perfect word and overthinking the process. You yeah. really have to learn how to use your intuition and feel what someone else is thinking and feeling. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, I think we all have a tendency, tendency to overthink when we're like, okay, I'm going to go into this conversation. I'm going to practice tactical empathy. And it's like, okay, relax, breathe. You're just talking to a person and you're trying to make it about them. It's that simple on the surface. Like if you, if you get caught up with like your techniques, it, like they're going to, they're going to be able to tell that something weird is going on. It's going to feel weird. <laughs> so let me ask you a different question. When Chris and I first came to you with the full fee agent and that project, what went through your mind? When, when did you first begin to understand what it is we were talking about? That's a really interesting question. I mean, this was a few years ago now. Um, and a little bit of context. So when I came into the project, they had already done a bunch of interviews with other writers. So I had, I, I was like handed a bunch of files, right. recordings of other interviews that you had done. I listened to these guys talk on these interviews for a few hours and I kind of got like a gist of it. And then, um, and then I finally got to talk to them and I think it sank in slowly. Like some, some of it felt a little bit obvious at first, but then the deeper we got and the more examples I got to hear, the more stories I got to hear, the more it felt like something new to me and the more I started to see parallels in my own world. So I'm not a real estate agent. Um, I, I know nothing about the, or I knew nothing about this business <laughs> at the time. Don't say anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's been a few years now. I like to think I know something, but <laughs> I've never sold a house, right? Um, but I am a freelancer. Um, and I started to see parallels where, you know, the work that I do is also super duper trust-based. It's, it can be highly emotional. It can be a long-term process. Um, and I, I'm, I'm an individual, I'm running my own business, just like every agent is running their own business. And so I started to see all of these parallels, um, and, and to see ways that I could practice all of these things in my own life and my own business. And it made more and more sense. Would it be, would it be unfair to say that this is becoming more and more a way of life for you in terms Absolutely. of- Absolutely. I mean, I think about it every day now, you know, I think about it all the time. Um, and I actually talk about it a lot with my husband too, because, you know, he finds this stuff really interesting. The more he learns about it, the more curious he gets. And he is, uh, he's a very curious person. So he challenges my thinking. Like the other day I was telling him about, um, you know, trying, I was writing a delicate email where I had to, I, I felt like maybe this person was going to feel like I was stepping on their toes, um, telling them what to do, not appreciating their work. And I was trying to avoid, um, you know, offending them, um, or, or, you know, sc screwing up the relationship at all. So I was telling my husband about how I tried to start this email with, um, you're probably going to think I'm stepping on your toes. It's a little bit of an accusation audit there at the beginning of the email. And he said, well, like, are you sure that you didn't like, you know, plant a negative? As I said, <laughs> he didn't say that, but I know that's what he meant. Like, he, he was like, are you sure you didn't plant a negative? Because I find that when I preface things that way, like 
it, people get even more offended. So like we have these conversations in our in our everyday life about how to use these skills. It happens all the time. And that was one of the things that came yeah. up with the program. You can't plant a negative that doesn't exist. Right. But the delivery with this is Tone. so important. And I think a lot of people... So <laughs> it's so easy to mess up an accusation audit if you say it the wrong way, right? If you say like, I don't want you to think I'm stepping on your toes. Well, that's very different. Right. Because it's, it, it's an I statement. Um, and if you, if you follow that up with a, but it's even worse. I don't want you to think I'm stepping on your toes, but what is the other person going to think? You're stepping on their toes. Like it's, you have to be so careful with the way you phrase it. Practice, practice, practice. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that gives you a flavor for <laughs> the two days. What I really wanted to do was introduce you to Madison. Madison, here you are. Hello, live, everyone. Live. Here we are. <laughs> and, and she truly is a very integral part of the company, the growth, all the, the different things we're doing. Madison, Caroline, Aldi the new coaches that are coming on board you you know you've got to you know inter, uh, interview each of them with Rika and uh, Lori and Lauren and Sydney and it's a pretty exciting time would you disagree it's a very exciting time we have a lot of new people coming in um, and everybody brings a particular set of skills a particular perspective personality um, so, you know, we're still all working with the same playbook, the same six building blocks, the same emphasis on tactical empathy. We're all approaching this business of real estate from the same philosophy, but everybody has a little bit of a flavor to it and certain things that they're extra good at. So I think bringing new people on board is really going to expand this organization in an in amazing way. And you've seen lots of changes since when... You first joined on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've been, aside from the books, you know, we finished the third book. We finished the manuscript maybe last summer. Right. Um, and after that, you know, Steve came to me and was like, we need, we need a new website. I need help with emails. I need all the things. And, you know, we've, we, I think we've really gotten our communication to a place where we're ready to, to shout from the rooftops in a way that we haven't before. And, and process is a big part of doing that. Yeah. I, I, like, like and this producing content is so time consuming. You have to be organized. And the, the weekly blog used to be such a, uh, a thing for me. It would take me three or four hours on a Sunday. I'd be thinking about it all the time. And it, it was a real, a real project. And then we, uh, we set up a half hour call. You and I have a half hour call every Monday. I download whatever is on my mind. And yeah. by Friday, you have me, you have a written copy. There's very rarely any edits to it. And it goes out Sunday morning like clockwork. It's a process. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do uh, uh, in all parts of the company. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, process makes everything smoother, easier. And man, when we don't get our half an hour on Monday, it, ugh, it, what a week. It screws up the whole week. It. <laughs> and you know, now we have the uh, role play blog going yeah. out. Same yeah, type I of mean, thing. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have all this content, you know, creating the podcast. We're going to be doing YouTube videos um, because this stuff is so powerful. I know you guys know it. Um, and I also know that it can be hard to talk to other people about it. It can be hard to introduce these concepts to people who have no idea what we're talking about. And so, you know, our goal as we go through this year is to just say more, say it more, say it to more people. And because it does take some time to sink in. So I thought do a little thing, do yeah. a little something different today. Again, introduce you to Madison. We go through this half hour every week download she writes it out and that's what you receive every sunday so madison again my biggest thank you to you and I look forward to getting the podcast project rolling and this is 
our initial right this initial is our effort first take there you go. here we go thanks guys we'll get a name for it <laughs> thanks madison thank you that was fun